afternoon, everyone. As I said, one of the things that I am most proud of with regard to Berkeley Law is how much it values excellent teaching. Each year, we honor one of our faculty members with the Rudder Award for Outstanding Teaching. Today, we bestow the award for 2019-20 on a truly deserving recipient, Professor Amanda Tyler, the Shannon Cecil Turner Professor of Law here at Berkeley Law. Just a bit of background about Professor Tyler, and then we have wonderful six speakers to pay tribute to her. Professor Tyler went to Stanford for her undergraduate degree, then to Harvard Law School. She clerked on the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit for Judge Guido Calabresi, and then on the United States Supreme Court for Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She practiced at a law firm in Washington, D.C., and then became a professor at George Washington University Law School. In 2012, Berkeley Law was incredibly fortunate to lure her to the West, West Coast, and she joined our faculty that year. She's the author and co-author of many books. Her book in 2017, Habeas Corpus in Wartime, is enormously important and has been tremendously positively reviewed. And I should mention she's the co-author of a forthcoming book to be published early in 2021. She has a co-author you might have heard of, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The book is titled Justice, Justice Thou Shall Pursue, A Life's Work Fighting for a More Perfect Union. She's also the author of many wonderful law review articles. Today though, we're gathered to honor her as a teacher. She teaches especially in the areas of civil procedure, federal courts, Supreme Court seminar, public law seminar, and other areas. In terms of student evaluations, they're always off the charts in a positive direction. She always received among the very top evaluations of anyone on our faculty. As I've talked to many of our graduates in the last number of years, they told me often that the best teacher they had in law school was Amanda Tyler. And I would be remiss if I didn't also speak of her tremendous role in helping our students get clerkships. She's just instrumental in that regard and her tireless efforts as the chair of our clerkship committee. So what we have today is six speakers to pay tribute to Professor Tyler and her teaching. I'm gonna do very quick introductions of them to start with, because I want you to hear them and then hear Professor Tyler. Um, and I'm grateful to each of them for their busy schedule, for taking time for the busy schedule to speak here today. The first speaker, Professor Kieran Tani, she's now the Seaman Family University professor at the University of Pennsylvania, and of course spent many years as a professor here at Berkeley Law. We will then hear from four former students of Professor Tyler. And again, I'm so grateful to you for taking time from your workday to speak with us. Janab Kande, Lana Alfara, Sean Ose Uso, and Alex Thompson will speak. Then Andrew, Professor Andrew Bratt, professor here at Berkeley Law himself, a past recipient of the Rudder Award will speak and then we'll hear from Professor Tyler. So with that, let me turn to Karen Tani. Thank you so much. What a privilege to be here celebrating a treasured friend and colleague and being reminded of Berkeley's extraordinary commitment to teaching. Um, we knew when Amanda joined our faculty, I was just a baby professor, but it was clear to all of us that she was an excellent teacher. What I learned from seeing her in action over the years is that she is excellent in ways that are unique. She has a signature style. I was trying to figure out the best way to explain this and I have to invoke, and Amanda, I hope this pleases you. I have to invoke one of our shared non-academic pastimes. We both played college level soccer, Amanda much better than I, let me say that at the outset. And we both experienced coaching, good and bad. And Amanda's skill as a teacher is akin to that of the very best coaches in three ways. Our colleague Ann Joseph O'Connell taught me that you can really only ever say three things in one of these comments. So I'm gonna limit myself to three ways. So first, the best coaches respect their players and believe deeply in their potential. And they show it by maintaining very high expectations and by giving their players regular opportunities for growth. Now this is a tricky business when translated to the classroom uh, because when you convey high expectations to students, 
some of them will dwell on the prospects of failure. No one likes to feel like a, a failure, especially people who have succeeded for their whole lives. Um, it's also true that growth requires hard work and some discomfort. Um, as Amanda knows well, you don't get faster by always running at a comfortable pace. You don't get stronger by continuing to lift the same amount of weight. Uh, as a teacher, I'm probably guilty, I would say, of not challenging my students enough because I'm worried about causing discomfort and anxiety. And I'm worried about um, being likable in an environment where, um, where women are supposed to be liked. And Amanda, something that I just so admire about her is that she has really figured this out, how to get the best out of her students in a way that conveys respect and support for them and without really caring or making it a priority um, whether she conforms to gendered stereotypes of likability. Although as is clear from this award, her students love her. Uh, but what I'm trying to convey is that her students know that she expects a lot from them, that she's gonna push them and they consistently rise to the challenge. This is good for the students, it's good for the law school and it's great for the people out there who will benefit from those students' legal work. A second characteristic of the best coaches, they instill a love of the game, which their players carry with them for years. And good coaches, of course, also enjoy winning, but they never try to win in a way that degrades the game. Amanda loves the law, and this is clear from her teaching. Students leave her classes loving the puzzles of civil procedure, loving the intricacies of federal court, wanting to know more. Uh, perhaps more important, Amanda cares deeply about the rule of law. She doesn't just love the law, she cares about the rule of law, about a system of governance that is bound by law, and about being a part of a profession that applies those rules fairly, including against the powerful. And this comes through clearly in her scholarship, which I, which I highly recommend to you, but also her teaching. So from what I've seen, you know, sprinkled throughout her classes are nuggets of wisdom about what it means to be a good ethical lawyer, and it is not winning at any cost. A third and final characteristic of the best coaches, they, gen they genuinely care about their players. Their players are not just packages of assets and weaknesses who will wear a team jersey for a year or two. They are people with ideas and aspirations and complex lives off the field. For Amanda, students are not just students that are going to be replaced by different students in the next semester. I know this because I talked to her about shared students from years past and she knows what they are up to and what they're going to do next. And I have seen her advocate fiercely for her students after they leave law school in a way that she, one would only do if one really cared and not just advocating for them uh, for clerkships and other fancy opportunities that you know bring prestige to the law school but helping them navigate um, tricky professional circumstances and truly having their backs as a mentor. Um, I have many more things to say about Amanda. I realize time is short but in closing Amanda I have learned so much from watching you interact with students. I admire you so deeply and I look forward to the day in the future post pandemic when I can knock on your door with a bottle of wine and we can celebrate this in the way you deserve. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Janab Conde. I graduated from Berkeley Law in May of 2019 and thanks in large part to Professor Tyler's support I'm now clerking for Judge Paul Watford on the Ninth Circuit after having completed a clerkship with Judge Victor Bolden in the District of Connecticut. Professor Tyler is one of my favorite people, not just professors, and I'm honored to be here so that I can brag a little bit about her. When I first looked her up in the summer of 2016, along with all my 1L fall professors, and I was especially lucky in my random assignment of 1L professors, I remember being particularly impressed that Professor Tyler had clerked for Justice Ginsburg. At that time, I didn't know what clerking was, but it sounded impressive and fancy. I was less excited about the subject of civil procedure, which sounded dry and boring. Learning it under Professor Tyler was anything but. She went beyond the black letter law to challenge us on how we could use the law to achieve certain policy goals. And she emphasized how important it was for us to, to know the rules of civil procedure, because no matter how lofty your goals, your lawsuit can and will get thrown out if you fail to follow the rules. She never missed an opportunity to connect what we were learning to real life. 
The Wednesday after election day 2016, we had civil procedure at 8.25 a.m. It was a somber day to say the least. Many of us were wearing black in mourning. I didn't know how Professor Tyler would start the class, but it made me feel a bit better to see that she was also dressed in all black. And what she said will stick with me forever. She shared that she was devastated, but she got up and came to teach us because in the end, she is privileged that this is her job and we are privileged to be learning the law and to enter this profession. She shared that she was motivated to do her job as best as she can, teaching us so that we're prepared to go out into this world and fight for what we believe in. We as lawyers have a lot of power and privilege, which is not always used for justice, but we can choose to use our power for justice, specifically to advance the rights of people without access to power. And with that privilege means we can't quit. Or as one of both my and Professor Tyler's favorite movie quotes says, with great power comes great responsibility. Hearing her that day inspired many of us to want to try even harder. Or as Julie Pittman, another former student of Professor Tyler said, if I'm going to pursue justice, I want to do my very best in service of that pursuit. Professor Tyler walks the walk. Instead of staying in private practice, she chose to pay it forward and dedicate herself to teaching. As co-chair of Berkeley Law's clerkship committee for so many years, she is an important gatekeeper and she opened many doors for students of color, myself included. I was privileged to get to know Professor Tyler beyond 1L Fall, to serve as her research assistant for two years, have her advise me for a California Law Review and take federal courts and Supreme Court seminar with her as well. But in the end, the most important things I learned from Professor Tyler were not about the law. It was about how to be a better human. She has supported me through a lot of tough times in law school and beyond, and I'm happy to call her a friend as well as a mentor. Accomplished, confident women often, often engender fear in others. And I can say that among the students, there is a mix of both fear and admiration for Professor Tyler. Strong women aren't for everyone, but I'm grateful that Berkeley Law is honoring one. I want to leave you out with a piece of simple advice Professor Tyler often shared with me. Find something that you love, make time for yourself and to recharge. For her, that's running. For me, it's yoga. And take care of yourself. We have a long fight ahead. Thank you all. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Lena Alfara, and I am also a former student of Professor Tyler. Uh, first, I want to say that I'm so glad this event is finally happening. Professor Tyler deserves to be um, celebrated, and uh, a celebration is still a celebration, even if it's through Zoom. Uh, so, like I said, I'm one of the fortunate students uh, who was randomly placed in Professor Tyler's, um, I believe, first ever Berkeley small mod uh, for civil procedure. And uh, I believe she's currently teaching her second one. So we used to be the only one so far, but now she, she has a second small mod and they're very lucky. If any of you are on uh, today, just know that you lucked out. Uh, I also ended my Berkeley Law experience with Professor Tyler with federal courts. Uh, special edition Zoom. And I can assure you that the enthusiasm and the energy from her end is pretty much the same whether she is in the classroom or um, online in front of a screen. As a teacher, Professor Tyler has a way of making even the most seemingly mundane cases from forever ago and often about old white men feel very real and important to our lives today. It's hard to make civil procedure relatable, and it's easy to forget the human stories behind the cases. But Professor Tyler always got us there. She always brought us back to the here and the now, reminding us how these cases impact very real human beings today. And it was always a special treat uh, when she had some story of her practice days that related to the very specific point we went over in class that day. And, um, it was always clear from the way that she taught that her goal was uh, not just to teach us civil procedure, but to teach us how to be good lawyers. Um, 
It's also no wonder that Professor Tyler believes civil procedure to be the most important class you take in law school, if at least one L year, I'm not sure if she believes it for all three years, but for one L year, she truly believes civil procedure is the most important class. And she has a fun slide uh, where she shows you visually how important she thinks it is. And the way that she teaches it, she really convinces you that it is, and, and it is. <laughs> I remember feeling very passionate in class about discussions we were having over procedure. Um, but regardless of what she's teaching, Professor Tyler is just always excited for class, even when class is staring at a computer screen of students. You can tell that she loves her job and that it translates into the environment that she creates in class with her students. But what is most important to me personally and as a woman in this field is who Professor Tyler is outside of the classroom. Professor Tyler is more than just a professor. She is also a mother, a wife, a daughter, a marathon runner, um, sides of her that she allows us to see glimpses of every so often. And that's really a treat for students to see those sides of their professor. She reminds us every day, and especially during the shelter in place last spring, that we are all human beings first. From hearing all about her time coaching her daughter's soccer team during 1L fall, to uh, hearing stories of what Taz, her puppy, threw up, ripped up, or ate that he wasn't supposed to eat, uh, Professor Tyler is unapologetically herself in front of her students. She reminds us that she got where she is because she worked hard and that it is possible for any one of us, including uh, a first-generation student, daughter of immigrants like myself. Professor Tyler, thank you for being the professor that you are. I am so fortunate to have been randomly placed in your class three years ago and to have chosen to end my Berkeley Law experience in your class again last spring. Thank you for caring so much about each and every one of your students and for being so compassionate uh, during last spring as we were navigating new territory for the school. And on a personal note, thank you for always believing in me. Berkeley Law is very, very lucky to have you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sean Rose Wusu. I am an assistant professor at the University of Pennsylvania uh, and a former student of Professor Tyler. And I'm excited to be here today to celebrate Professor Tyler's receipt of the Rudder Award for Teaching Distinction at Berkeley Law. I had the good fortune of taking three classes with Professor Tyler during my time at Berkeley. One hour civil procedure, a public law and policy seminar, and a seminar on the Supreme Court. Uh, so, you know, uh, coursework with Professor Tyler is, is kind of like Lay's chips. You can't have just one. Um, I'm, I'm going to quickly enumerate some of the many ways I was able to benefit from Professor Tyler's teaching and pedagogy, some of which are specific to me, others of which I'm sure many of her former students can agree with, and some of the panelists have, have, have mentioned um, some of the things that I'm going to point to. Uh, but all of which I think are evidence of why I think this award is so deserving. So, of course, CivPro is not an, an easy topic. It doesn't entail the hot button issues found in constitutional law, nor does it allow for the kinds of popular culture inspired intuitions that criminal law invites. Many students, including myself, came in with the expectation that it would be a very dry topic and some may continue to feel that way as a general matter, but in the fiefdom that was Professor Tyler's course, students were quickly abused of that idea. And this brings me to my first point, um, when uh, one of the many great things about Professor Tyler's teaching is her ability to bring ostensibly technical ideas to life. What that looked like was an ability to merge instruction about substantive law and rules with access to justice questions, sometimes very obviously, but also in subtle ways. Anyone who has taken a class with her knows that she has a certain kind of pedagogical determinants. It's, it's very clear what will be covered for the day, but within that is space for students to be intellectually curious and ask questions about how formal rules, what formal rules mean for law and practice. And as someone who's now on the other side of the podium, I can say that this is no simple task. 
My public law and public policy seminar was a course that Professor Tyler taught with another Rudder Award recipient, Professor Ann O'Connell. And there we engaged some of the pressing legal issues of the day. Every other week, leading scholars workshop papers. And in the weeks between, we read central articles that were in conversation with each other. That was a class where Professor Tyler helped teach the skills of being an academic, which was specific to me, as well as being a critical thinker, which is applicable to the larger class and in line with the educational mission of Berkeley Law more generally. She helped model how to ask the right questions, productively engage colleagues, and how to articulate healthy skepticisms. And those are lessons that I keep with me today. Finally, I should say that the Supreme Court seminar was a goodie. In that class, we read the background cases and cert petition of cases that were being considered by the court that term, with the final work product for the course being a written opinion by each student. And this was before the cases were decided by the court. Again, this was something that I benefited from in the context of teaching design and was one of the more creative classes that I took at Berkeley. But besides that, the course also introduced a class, many of whom would go on to become federal clerks, to the wide range of issues in the court's docket. And it did so in ways that were attuned to the obvious politics of the court, but never untied to the meaty novel legal questions involved. A feature that I think was useful to future clerks, as well as for me as a person who went on into legal practice and followed her at the same firm that she worked at uh, and ultimately entered academia. I'll end by saying this. Richard Freer is probably a name that is unfamiliar to most of you with the exception of Civ Pro folks in the room and people who have good memories of prepping for the bar exam. Freer is a professor at Emory and teaches the Civ Pro section of Barbary. He's good, but I can say that when I was studying for the, for the bar, I relied as much on his lectures and notes as I did my notes from an outline from my Civ Pro class, which I think is a testament to the great instruction and the shelf life of her teaching, which I and countless students have been fortunate to be beneficiaries of. Thank you, Professor Tyler. Hello, everyone. I'm Alex Thompson. Um, I took Civ Pro my 1L year with Professor Tyler in fall 2017, and I graduated um, this last May. My very first and only argument I ever got into with a professor while in law school was with Professor Tyler. It happened just a few weeks into my 1L year. Somehow, the topic of legal, legal genre movies came up. I, perhaps a little too strident, stridently, announced to our small mod section that Legally Blonde was one of my principal aspirations for becoming a lawyer. Professor Tyler would have none of it. Sardonically, she quipped that who would ever want to watch a movie about a blonde from California who left to attend Harvard Law. I was stunned. My real life Al Woods professor was not a fan. Nevertheless, this moment led to a deepening bond our class shared with Professor Tyler. At the conclusion of the semester, our class presented Professor Tyler with a real life Elle Woods Barbie doll, which to my knowledge continues uh, to stay in her office at Berkeley. And just one month before graduating, in the middle of the pandemic, we held a virtual Legally Blonde screening. Professor Tyler confessed she had reluctantly seen the movie just a few weeks prior with her daughter. And even more importantly, after watching it a second time with our class, she conceded that she loved it. It was the perfect end to our three years with Professor Tyler. I give this example to show another side to Professor Tyler, the unique bond she shared with students outside of the classroom. However, this bond was developed in large part because of the connection we formed with her inside the classroom through her teaching. Professor Tyler extolled us with stories of her time clerking on the Supreme Court for the notorious RBG. She induced countless mini panic attacks among the lucky two students who'd be cold called for the entirety of a lecture. And she zeroed in on each student's particular passions and connected those to the subject matter. Professor Tyler worked to ensure, successfully so, 
that each student cared about what we were learning and appreciated its application. In addition, from the very first day in class, Professor Tyler ingrained in us that legal battles are fought and won based on procedure. We started off our law school journey in our first lecture with a discussion of a civil rights era case, one in which Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was jailed in Birmingham, Alabama because he marched after being denied a permit. It was discriminatory application of the law that denied Dr. King his right to march, but it was also the law itself that prevented him from obtaining injunctive relief. This was an important lesson that Professor Tyler wanted to teach us, that legal fights to demand equality or codify certain fundamental rights and liberties are won because of following the prescribed procedures, in addition to crafting the superior legal argument. Even a meritorious case cannot succeed without adherence to our legal rules and institutions. This lesson, fidelity to the rule of law, was perhaps one of Professor Tyler's greatest contributions to molding how I think about the law and my role as a lawyer. More importantly, it is of universal application and more salient than ever. Evidently, we are in a precarious time as a nation. Our constitutional structures have been weakened. Adherence to our political and legal institutions is dwindling. In short, there is a crisis in this country when it comes to respecting the very norms and legal institutions meant to safeguard some of the most basic and fundamental guarantees of a well-functioning democracy. More than anyone else, it was Professor Tyler who instilled in us the necessity of respecting the rule of law. Professor Tyler is exceptionally deserving of the Rudder Award for Teaching Distinction. Among her many achievements is the legacy she leaves in developing a whole generation of law students and lawyers committed to respecting our democratic and legal institutions, coupled with the desire to reform those institutions to be more accessible, more equal, and more just. Professor Tyler, congratulations on this well-deserved award. Thank you for having such a tremendous impact on me and so many others. Your impact as a professor is remarkable and I look forward to watching it grow for years to come. Thank you. Uh, it's such an honor uh, to be asked to help celebrate my friend and colleague, Professor Amanda Tyler, a truly worthy recipient uh, of the Rudder Award for Teaching Distinction. Um, she's an inspiration to her students. Now I use that word quite uh, intentionally because that's the word that reappears over and over again in her teaching evaluations. Now there are others, erudition, grace, clarity, humor, and world-class. Um, I also uh, wanna note a comment that I'm glad the Dean is here uh, to hear, which is uh, whatever you're paying Professor Tyler uh, is not enough. Uh, I agree with that uh, and only partly in the hopes that it will trickle down to the lesser procedure professors uh, on the faculty. Um, uh, but nevertheless, uh, I highlight it. Uh, indeed, the only weakness that seems to come up when students uh, talk about Professor Tyler's class is that they wish there was more Civ Pro. Uh, that is something that I can also uh, get behind. Um, but where was I? Ah, oh yes, inspiration. Um, now I know uh, better than most about the inherent inspiration in civil procedure. Um, even though students don't know how great it's gonna be uh, at the beginning. Now to be fair, when some teach it, Civ Pro is not high on the inspiration uh, scale, but I can understand why Amanda's students say it. Amanda is an inspiration because she brings boundless enthusiasm, high standards, unshakable integrity, and her unbeatable work ethic to everything that she does. Now, uh, Professor Tani already said something like this, and indeed this is the danger of going last uh, among <laughs> speakers, but I'm gonna say it too, uh, because I would say that Amanda is almost like having the best coach that you can imagine for your classes. If that coach were also a world-renowned expert, a clerk for the Supreme Court, and a preeminent lawyer. She's the sort of person who you can imagine giving you the sort of halftime speech that could get you to run through a wall, even if that wall is the Erie Doctrine. 
Uh, and she can also give you the kind of tough love or kick in the butt when you need that too. And she is tough, but she's clear about why she's tough. It's because she wants her students to reach their potential and accomplish what they set out to do. Indeed, as one student wrote, at the points in the semester when I was most stressed and most disenchanted with law school, Professor Tyler's class brought me back to why I want to be a lawyer. Now, after all, Professor Tyler is not only a great professor, but of course also an incredible athlete, having run marathon after marathon while also doing everything else uh, that she manages to do. Now, I personally don't have access to that degree of energy. And as someone who includes among his life goals, never running anywhere ever again, I'm in awe of this achievement uh, and my, admire it for its own sake. But it's also illustrative of Amanda in general. I know of almost no one else who does so much and does it so well. And although I've never had the honor of being one of her students, I do feel like I've had a front row seat. We came to Berkeley in 2012 at the same time. Amanda as a tenured professor already renowned uh, for her scholarship from GW uh, and me as someone uh, who was alive um, and you know, about as green as it gets uh, as a teacher and a scholar and, and anything else. Um, we were co-chairs of the clerkships committee for several years, um, by which I mean I mostly stood by and learned from Amanda how to get our students the opportunities they deserve. Uh, and even beyond clerkships, uh, to say that I learned more from her than anyone else over my decade here um, would be an understatement about being a teacher, a scholar, uh, and someone who can connect the world of academia and the sometimes highfalutin ivory tower ideas that we think about here to the real world of legal practice and how it affects real people. More than that though, she has been somebody who's helped me and my family uh, through good times and difficult times as though we were members of her own family. She welcomed us into our home. She was the first non-family member we ever allowed to watch our daughter, uh, giving us our first date uh, after she was born. Uh, and when it came to my scholarship, I always knew that if I could satisfy Amanda a little bit, uh, I must be on the right track. Um, so in thinking about these remarks, um, my mind kept returning to the best teacher I ever had in law school, David Shapiro, uh, who also happened to be Amanda's civil procedure professor, mentor, and ultimately her co-author on the magisterial Hart and Wexler's uh, federal courts casebook. Now I had Professor Shapiro for federal courts and he uh, remains a role model for me uh, in many ways, even though I cannot count him uh, as a mentor. I wouldn't have even had the courage to even go uh, to his office hours. It doesn't surprise me that Amanda did, uh, but I, I probably wouldn't have. Now, we lost Professor Shapiro last year uh, and several moving tributes were published to him uh, in the Harvard Law Review. And as I read them, it struck me that so much of what was said about Professor Shapiro by luminaries like Justice Ginsburg and others applied to Amanda. And indeed, Amanda was among this very impressive group invited um, to author a tribute. And she wrote, as she had on the occasion of David's retirement from the classroom, that when she decided to become a law professor, her only hope was to be half as good as David. Well, as someone who has known you both, I can affirm, Amanda, that you've done way more than that. And today is further resounding proof. And I can also say that it's my only hope to be half as good as you. Congratulations. It is very hard to follow up those remarks and particularly uh, Andrew in, in, invoking David Shapiro. Now that, that's, not, that's not fair. <laughs> uh, David was a cherished mentor and friend to me and uh, to have you say that is, is just the highest compliment I could ask for. Thank you, Erwin. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Janab. Thank you, Lana. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Alex. And thank you, Andrew. I am um, speechless, <laughs> which doesn't happen very much. I'm, I'm totally overwhelmed uh, by all the wonderful things that you said. Uh, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I so wish that we were able 
to be together in person. Um, I, I'm glad that we're doing this and, and maybe it made it easier for some of you to join by having it be on Zoom and you didn't have to get on an airplane, but I, I do wish that we could be together in person. Uh, but this is pretty great. And I, as I said, I'm just totally overwhelmed and, and so extremely moved by everything that you've all said. Thank you so much. I thought uh, I would say a few things, not too much, but a few things. And one of the things I wanted to do was say thank you to the late William Rutter who established this award. And I don't know how much people know about Mr. Rutter, uh, but I urge you if, you, if you don't know much, to read his obituary because his life was one that was very well lived. Among many other things, Mr. Rutter used his law degree to launch programs and publications all geared toward making the law more accessible and easier to understand. That might explain why he established a teaching award. The students in the audience will appreciate in this respect that he authored the very first Gilbert's Outlines, which generations of law students have used to master their courses at the 11th hour. He was also a founder of Barbary to help students prepare for the mysterious bar exam. He was also a generous philanthropist as well, and I am deeply grateful that his efforts included creating this award. I am humbled and tremendously honored to receive this very, very special recognition, and especially humbled to have sat and listened to my former students and two of my treasured colleagues uh, say such nice things. It has been said that as professors, our greatest legacy is our students. And I think this is very true. The articles and the books that we write may or may not be read, but the work that our students do as lawyers and particularly the work that our Berkeley law students and graduates do is game changing. To play a role in training our students so as to launch them on their careers is enormously rewarding and nothing brings me greater pride in my professional life than to see my students on the front lines fighting to make ours a better country and world. I often joke with my students on the last day of a class that I want them to keep in touch with me and tell me about all the great things that they are doing so that I can take credit for them. <laughs> well, truth be told, it's not actually a joke. I am so proud to know, for example, that my former Berkeley Law students are fighting the government right now on its inhumane family separation policies, that they are in important positions of power using their sound judgment and wisdom as law clerks and as prosecutors, that they are in the trenches as public defenders and in other roles, ensuring that our criminal justice system has integrity, that they are working to protect our environment and to keep us safe that they are working to preserve free and fair elections, that like Sean, they are training the next generation of great lawyers, and that they are working as one of my current students will soon be doing to carry on Justice Ginsburg's legacy at the ACLU Women's Rights Project. I could stand up here or sit up here <laughs> all day and talk about my students, and I would if you would let me. <laughs> but I know we don't have all day. The larger point I'm trying to make is that it is me who is lucky to be able to teach here and to work with our incredible students. They inspire me every single day, both in my classroom and by what I get to watch them do when they graduate. To all of my students, past and present, and especially the four of you who have joined here today, Join me here today, thank you. It is a true privilege to work with you. I would be uh, remiss today if I did not single out two people who were my first and my very best teachers. My parents are here and they taught me from a very early age how important education is. For each of them, education was a path to a better life. Their lives are emblematic in this respect of the American dream. I benefited from their hard work 
and the opportunities that education afforded them, insofar as they were able to give me the very best opportunities in my own life. And I would not be here without all that they provided me and all that they taught me along the way. If you look around this country today, there is reason to worry that the American dream is vanishing. One of the things that I treasure most about being a part of this law school faculty at this university is that the very same American dream that enabled my parents to build such a great life is very much alive and well at UC Berkeley. Here I have had the honor of teaching absolutely incredible students, many of whom are the first in their families to go to college, many of whom are first generation professionals. And I get to watch them leave here and rise to the leadership ranks of our profession. It is one of the things that makes Berkeley so very special. And I am particularly proud to be a part of this institution for that reason. Balancing the various aspects of my life is very challenging. And in that respect, I must also thank my better half who is also with us. He makes everything possible. And I should acknowledge my kids and probably Taz, who in addition to giving me endless humorous fodder to lighten the mood in my classroom are my greatest source of personal pride and joy. And there I'm speaking of my kids, <laughs> although I do love Taz. <laughs> I count myself enormously fortunate as well to have the colleagues that I have here at Berkeley Law it is a joy to work with all of you. And I know many of you are on here with us today. Uh, and I miss you, Karen. I wish we could entice you back. Uh, but thank you, Andrew. Thank you, everyone. Like my students, I have learned so much from my colleagues. And it is a great joy and privilege to work with all of you. And a special thank you, finally, to Irwin, who is an absolutely fantastic dean and from whom it is a very special honor to receive this award. I am very moved and I am enormously grateful. Thank you one and all very, very much. At this point, we would all rise for a standing ovation. Um, I would have the opportunity to present to you a small gift in an envelope. I think that it was delivered to you this morning. Um, it doesn't do just, it's a, it's a crystal apple. Um, and it marks receiving the Rudder Award along with the gift that goes with it. And I wish we could be together today for so many reasons, including so you could hear the resounding applause from so many people um, for the wonderful remarks that you and everyone gave, but most of all for your superb teaching at Berkeley Law. Amanda, congratulations on the Rudder Award. It's the highest award that this law school can give with regard to teaching, and you are so very deserving of it. Thank you so much. And my thanks to each of the speakers, as I said, for taking time from busy schedules to be with us. And everyone, stay safe, be well. Thank you, everyone.